to Bohannon for the win. Got it. And Iowa with a miracle comeback victory. 3.3 on the clock. Baseball pass. Tip. Uh -oh. Caught. Shot. Jordan buzzer beater Bohannon joins us now to talk about this Hawkeye team who seems to just thrive in the final moments of these basketball games. Let's begin, Jordan, with Saturday night. 3.3 seconds left on the clock. Seems like you guys didn't have a chance, but oh wait, yes you did. Walk us back through that final play from your vantage point on what you saw. Yeah, uh, Rutgers, uh, they said two guys at me, so I knew I was gonna, probably going to get the ball this time. And uh, Connor made a great pass down court, um, and it tipped perfectly right into Joe's hands. And I had first hand, I, I was watching the ball, and it really it nicked the backboard, uh, just a perfect angle, and swished in. It, it was quite the moment to finish with. Yeah, on your Twitter feed, you even said he called bank on that shot. What did you mean by that? Yeah, um, I, I'm sure people were going to say if he didn't call bank, that didn't count. It was always a joke whenever someone banks a shot. But uh, no, it, it was a fantastic shot and uh, some will always remember for, for years to come. This comes on the heels of you hitting a buzzer beater game winning shot last week against Northwestern, also included in the highlight reel we just saw leading into this interview. Walk us through the moment in that game from your perspective. Yeah, we really battled that game. That was a, that was a tough, tough game to come back on. Northwestern played great and um, really made us struggle the entire game. But um, we bought it back. Uh, we had a great play set up at the end of the game. I got a good screen off uh, Tyler Cook, and I was able to get free and shoot a shot. I've been shooting ever since I was little. Uh, one <laughs> dribble, fade away to the right. And um, it felt good when I left my hand, so I, I knew it was going to end up good. Why do you like having the ball in your hands in the most pressure-filled moments of the game? Do explain that. Yeah, I mean, it's just something I've always grown up with, uh, having the ball in my hands, being a point guard, just feeling comfortable with the ball late game. Um, I always had a lot of confidence in my game and uh, having confidence in making plays late game. And I know coaches have um, given me the green light every game to shoot shots when I'm open, and they definitely give me the green light towards the end of the game to make plays happen. And, um, my teammates stay confident in me as well. So um, with all that, it just, it just makes my uh, confidence go way sky high and able to make plays down the stretch. Our BTN, the journey it profiles just how pivotal your family has meant to your life. How else have they shaped your basketball career? Yeah, they just made me into a better person, honestly. That's just what it comes down to, as simple as that. Um, all, everything that I've been through since I was little, um, like I said, watching my brothers play and um, I kind of had an advantage growing up to see firsthand what it takes to play Division One basketball, and uh, I was able to take that to heart and keep working every single day of my life to get to this point, and um, without them, I would definitely wouldn't be here. You guys are in the thick of a huge race for that final double bye for the Big Ten tournament between three teams, including you guys. So what's the approach now as you finish off the season, knowing what's at stake for this team? Yeah, I think the main thing is just controlling what, what we can control. Um, as much as we want teams above us to get knocked off, um, we can't really can control that. So we just have to worry about our own game, uh, worry about the next possession, and realize that it just takes, it's going to take a, all 40 minutes to win any game this conference because um, it's one of the best conferences um, in the entire country. And um, for us to be able to climb to the top, we just have to worry about ourselves and keep playing up to what we know we can play at. The first task at hand is Maryland, one of the other teams in that race with you guys. That's Tuesday night. What's the team vibe right now heading into that game? Yeah, we're definitely confident. Uh, sky high right now after the last couple games. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've been playing really well right now. Um, there's been stretches where we struggled at times in games, but the way we've been able to stay connected during um, the times of adversity really says a lot about the group this year. Um, and we're just willing to keep, just keep fighting. And that's, that's our mentality right now. We're not going out without a fight with any game, no matter what's happening. So 
Um, if we keep that mentality, I know um, we can do something really special this year. In addition to Iowa men's basketball being successful, your women's team also stepped into first place in the Big Ten after taking down Maryland yesterday. What does it mean to have that kind of camaraderie across both men's and women's basketball for you? Yeah, it's a lot of fun when you step foot in the training room, you see the women's basketball team and uh, just like us, their confidence is sky high. They're really optimistic and it's fun to be around because you want to be around that type of environment where um, everyone's having a good time in the program and the entire university. So um, it's definitely a lot of fun and they're, they're playing some really good basketball. I was able to watch them, uh, their game against Maryland yesterday, um, right before our practice and uh, Megan Gustafson is one of the best players in the country for a reason and uh, she, she, she's really special this year. All right, Jordan, before we let you go, we couldn't let you get out of the hot seat without doing some Bohannon brother trivia. So we're going to get started there. Which brother is the messiest? Uh, definitely me. Definitely me. <laughs> At least you admit it, though. Who's the worst singer <laughs> but thinks they're the best? Uh, probably Matt. He loves country music, but uh, he's not, <laughs> not a good singer. Who would you pick on your team right now if you could only choose one brother? Uh, probably Matt, because he's the one that just got out of college recently, so he's, he's still got conditioning left in him, I'm sure. <laughs> That's a politically correct answer. Who was the biggest complainer growing up? Uh, they, they'll probably say me, because I'm the youngest, <laughs> so they say I got everything when I was growing up. And your mom outed you on the, on the journey. I saw that, making, uh, making the brothers <laughs> get in trouble there. You're the youngest, so <clears throat> who did you enjoy setting up the most, getting them into trouble? Uh, probably Zach, because he would always, he'd always get on my, get on my nerves a lot. <laughs> Who's the best basketball player out of all four of you, if you put you all in the same sample size in your prime playing days? Probably Jason, I'm going to be honest. He, really? He's one of the best players I've ever seen play. I thought you would give that one to yourself. Uh, who is <laughs> pegged as the favorite growing up? Definitely me, definitely me, just because I was a little... Little one. <laughs> Fair enough. If you couldn't have the ball in your hands at the buzzer beating moments and you had to pick one brother to be in that clutch shot position, who would you choose to seal the victory? Who would you have the most confidence in? I wouldn't give the ball to any of them. I would lose the game. I don't want them to have hit the buzzer beater. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Well done, Jordan. Well, thanks so much for the time. Best of luck to you and your team the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate you having me on.